What is up everybody? Welcome back to Chemistry Basics presented by Doc Dean's Pools. I am James and today we are talking all about pH. Now the same rule for this applies as to what we said in the chlorine video. Accompanying this will be a blog post on the docdeanspools.com website where all of the guides and a lot of what I say will be written down for you in a kind of quick start guide or a quick reference manual for you so you don't have to constantly reference this video. You can just go there, check it out, get what you need and get back to fixing your pool. So pH. Not a whole lot of people know what pH actually stands for. It stands for potential of hydrogen, and it measures the difference between hydrogen and hydroxide ions in a solution. We use water as our kind of baseline, our middle ground here. So when you have more hydrogen than water does, it's acidic. When it has less hydrogen than water does, it's what's called a base. So pH, unlike a lot of the other chemicals that we use, which go from zero to whatever the range is, our middle ground is actually seven. Seven is ideally what the most pure drinking water should be. Some are a little bit lower, some are a little bit higher, but seven is what we use as the kind of baseline, the midline of everything that we do regarding pH. As we go up the pH scale, we go seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 is the very top end of the scale. That is the most basic of solutions. And as we go down the scale, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, we have more acidic solutions. So to put things a little bit into perspective so you have an idea of kind of where things are on this scale, seven is pure water, five is where we're gonna have things like black coffee. Most sodas are gonna sit around three. Makes sense now why those sodas are destroying our teeth, right? Lemon juice sits at about a two, and zero is pretty much pure battery acid, just the most gnarly stuff that if it got on you, it's like DEFCON 1, get that stuff cleaned off immediately. Going up the other end of the scale, as we get a little bit more basic, around nine, we're gonna find baking soda. About 13 is where you're gonna find stuff like oven cleaners, and at 14 is where you're gonna get stuff like Drano. 14 and zero on the scale, just because they're at opposite ends, they're still just as bad for you if you were to get on your skin. Now, something that you should know about this scale is that it isn't linear. Meaning that from seven, it's not like you have seven and then eight's up a little bit and then nine is the same. The difference in the scale is actually exponential by a factor of 10. So eight is 10 times more basic than seven and nine is 10 times more basic than eight. 10 times 10, 100. That means that nine is 100 times more basic than seven. So knowing this, you can start to see why stuff like lemon juice is okay. I mean, if it sits on you for a long time, it would start to sting. But then the difference between lemon juice and battery acid is absolutely insane. It's because it's a further 10 times more acidic. This is why we try and keep a fairly tight range when we're talking about managing pH in our pool water. Fun fact for you about pH, your blood sits at about 7.4 on the pH scale. You should remember that. And any significant changes to your body's pH would actually kill you. So all these things out there that claim that you can change your body's pH by drinking whatever the heck, it's all snake oil. It doesn't really work. And if it could, you would literally die. Now, ingesting a little bit of pool water that may be out of your body's pH range, totally fine, it's not gonna do anything to you. We drink soda and that has a pH of three. So if your pH on your pool water is set, sitting at 7.6, it's totally fine. So what does pH do to your pool? We use the pH measurement to serve two purposes. One is for you as the swimmer. The other is for the pool's shell and the equipment of the pool. For you as a person, 
Maintaining your pool's pH between 7.2 and 7.6 is absolutely ideal because remember what I said earlier about the blood being 7.4? Well, your eye sits between 7.4 and 7.6. So having your pool water at the same kind of pH as your eyes is actually gonna make it far, far more comfortable to swim. If you've ever been swimming in a pool and you've noticed that you come out and your eyes feel really dry, really itchy, really stingy, that could be down in part to chloramines, which is something that we'll talk about in another video. But incredibly often, the cause of that redness, that itchiness, that really itchy burning sensation, is the pH level being way off in either too acidic, meaning below seven, or far too basic, meaning far above seven. Having your pH though between 7.2 and 7.6 is not only good for you, it's also great for your pool's equipment. Water has always eroded things for a millennia, or however old you believe the earth to be. So over time, everything will eventually break down, corrode, erode, but what we wanna do is try and maintain our water so that doesn't happen because of things that we do. 7.2 to 7.6, it's great for us and it's great for all, any kind of pool equipment as well as any type of pool surface, whether it be concrete, acrylic, or fiberglass. It's completely manageable between those ranges. So managing pH levels though is a little bit different to something like chlorine. Chlorine, you're very rarely gonna run into a situation where it's like, it's so high, I have to lower it pH is a whole lot more of a balancing act. You need to keep it in a range and the water, depending on the weather, depending on the bather load, it has a tendency to either go up or to go down. I know with salt pools, pH ranges tend to go up. On things like acrylic and liner pools and stuff, it tends to go down. So before you can do anything with adjusting your pH, you have to measure it out. You have to get an incredibly accurate reading. I recommend using Taylor Technologies Comparator Test Kit. They are my favorite. They aren't paying me to say this. I wish they would, but frankly, they don't need me to tell you how great they are. Everyone just kind of knows this by now. So it would stand to reason that it's on a scale. If something's basic, we need to combat that with an acid. And something's acidic, we need to combat that with a base. And when it comes to pool chemistry, it's exactly that. When we get pH ranges that tend north of 7.8, the most common acid that we use is gonna be muratic acid. Now this is incredibly corrosive. Do not get it on your skin. And if you do put it into the water, be incredibly careful of the fumes that it lets off. If you start smelling anything a bit like white vinegar, you're sitting in the cloud of the muratic acid and you need to get away as quickly as possible. If you can, I would recommend the use of a double respirator. Most pool guys though, and most homeowners aren't gonna wanna use this or we simply just don't have them on us. So take note of where the wind is, make sure there's no animals out anywhere that could be harmed by this stuff and just let the cloud pass. When administering any kind of muratic acid as well, unlike chlorine, which you can get away with pouring it into one location, you're going to want to walk the acid around the perimeter of the pool. Reason being, in addition to being incredibly acidic and incredibly corrosive, it's also quite dense. So when you pour it in, it's gonna sink through the water. Now, if you put in, say, a half a gallon of acid on a fairly sizable pool to bring that pH level down, and it goes down the side of your wall and you have a lovely blue finish, one with the actual blue dye in it and stuff, it can actually etch away <laughs> at your surface and it can pull that color out. Now that's bad if you have a dyed surface. It's terrible if you have a brand new surface. If you have acrylic or you have a liner, it can pull the color out. It can start distorting it. So it's all things you absolutely must avoid with muratic acid. Always pour it around the perimeter and take a note of where that muratic acid cloud is coming from. The cloud also, for some reason, tends to be worse whenever it's rainy or if it's super humid out. So all of you in Florida, definitely take note of whenever you're putting in this muratic acid. 
So that's how to combat your high pHs. What about when the pH starts dropping off and gets kind of low? For that, you have to combat it with a base. And when it comes to using bases in pools, there are two that are most common, sodium bicarbonate, and you have soda ash. Sodium bicarbonate is more traditionally used to adjust your alkalinity readings, and it does have a effect on your pH, whereas soda ash is more commonly used for pure pH adjustment with very minimal alkalinity adjustment. Now, most of the time, pools that have problems maintaining ideal pH ranges also have issues with alkalinity, especially in our area. Most of us, we don't even carry soda ash. We use sodium bicarbonate more prominently because of the issues of the alkalinity levels dropping. And so we get kind of like a, a double whammy where we get to boost up our alkalinity and we get to boost up the pH and maintain our pH levels a little bit better as well. So if you're gonna use sodium bicarbonate, it's simple enough to dose with. You just take a scoop, you're gonna measure the weight or the volume, and then you're just gonna pour that directly into the pool. You can walk this around if you would like, or you can just throw it into one centralized area and brush it out to get rid of any clumps. But if you're going to use soda ash, I always recommend that you actually dissolve this in a bucket of water beforehand and then pour that water into the pool. Reason being, sometimes soda ash can make pools go incredibly cloudy quite quickly. So if you dissolve the soda ash into a bucket beforehand and then pour in the water, you'll get the benefit of increasing your pH level while having a fairly neutral effect on the alkalinity. Something to keep in mind when you buy muriatic acid though, is always check the clarity of the liquid. Muriatic acid should be completely clear. If you have any kind of yellow tinge to your muriatic acid, it's actually a sign of iron. And for obvious reasons, adding iron into your pool water unnecessarily can only be a bad thing. You should always be using a sequestering agent to make sure that should anything like that happen to you, the iron doesn't plate itself onto the surface of your pool and it's able to get actually grabbed by the filter. So just be mindful whenever you are going to buy acid that it is crystal clear and it is pure muriatic acid and that you aren't getting any kind of weird impurities thrown in there that could negatively affect your pool, such as the iron. So I'm just gonna roll by the different graphs that you need for dosing your pool, depending on whether you're trying to raise or lower the pH, whether you're using muriatic acid, soda ash, and the same as the chlorine video, please feel free to screenshot these to use at any time. Or if you would like, you can just click on the link in the description that will take you to the blog post that we've written all about this. It'll have all the information that we just talked about, as well as these guides so that you can just at a glance reference it and get back to dosing your pool yourself. So that is the video all about pH. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. If you have anything that you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment below. If you have any questions regarding your pool, please email me, james at docdeanspools.com. I do try to get back to every single person that emails me. I talked about it a little bit in this episode, but the next episode that we're gonna be doing talks all about pool's alkalinity and how to measure and manage that and exactly what the heck it is. So subscribe to the channel if you wanna be here for that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.